Hello, it's Ed. Welcome to the studio. And this week I'd like to talk a little bit about black and white versus colour photography. Now, I've always had a real issue around the use of colour and black and white. And I guess it's part of my desire always to make things as difficult as possible for myself in everything I do to try and make me feel like I've actually done something worthwhile at the end of it. And it's also partly a reaction to always being told that black and white was the important way to do photography and colour was something less important. And I know this is going back years and years and you've got the photographers who decided to work in colour rather than in black and white just to show that colour could be done properly. But I do feel that black and white is so much easier in general to do than colour. And by that what I mean is to get a result which impresses people. It's instantly more impressive to see a black and white photograph than a colour photograph. I think that's pretty much universally accepted. There are so many more pitfalls with colour photography. Obviously colours can clash, can not match, can be too saturated, not saturated enough. When it comes to selling a picture, we should never try and sell something on the basis that it would work well in a room, that's seen as very uh, common, isn't it? But people want something that goes along with their decor. Black and white, it works. It fits any colour scheme, whereas colour, you've got to wonder what colour are the furnishings in your house, etc, etc. So it is a big thing. And it's changed with digital as well, because now you can easily change a colour photograph into a black and white photograph or shoot a black and white photograph and then if you've got the raw file go actually I think maybe should we see what it looks like in colour? In my career I have shot predominantly in colour. Right at the very beginning I shot black and white and I still shoot black and white if I'm doing film a lot because I can then develop it myself and again that's part of the making things difficult for myself. If I'm going to process it myself and going to only have 36 exposures or 24 exposures on a roll, it's again making it harder than just going out with a digital camera, shooting it and then converting it to black and white or colour and having to think about what filters I'm going to use. Am I going to use a filter to try and change the effect? Because I can always just do that in Photoshop afterwards. So it is really interesting and something that I'd like to think about myself more and hopefully be helpful to you in helping you think about it yourselves more as well and getting back to me and filling me in on what rubbish I've been talking. <laughs> so without further ado let's go and shoot some pictures shooting for colour and then processing for black and white and putting the two side by side and seeing how many are keepers. Okay so we've got a nice industrial landscape here which might make a good shot so we'll just take that there see how that looks in both colour and black and white. Here we get a bit closer do it like that, it's kind of nice like that. There we go, lovely. And horrible wet rainy day, but we persevere. Here the plane's going overhead. And then we've got this nice one here that might make a nice shot. There we go. And off we go. Okay, so now we've got the interesting mishmash of signs. So we'll see how we can, can make of that. There we go, this is one of our favourites, an old favourite. Should we get a close up as well of the lovely? Here we have the Stockport Pigeons, which must of course be photographed in all their glory. Lovely. And we'll just cross the street because there's some interesting cones and things going on. So this might make quite a nice picture. Like that. Lovely. Okay, I like the way that the uh, wind's blowing this. Right, so let's see if we can get... That might make a good shot. There we go. Ah, wonderful. Let's do we want to take a picture of the shots? I think we do. Lovely. So 
So I wandered up to the marketplace in Stockport to try and get some pictures of people. And I got this one of somebody walking by dragging a trolley, which was kind of nice. And some coloured street signs because I thought I would give colour a chance using the bold red, which I think worked quite well. But there is the slight distraction of little bits of colour at the top of the frame, which is where black and white always saves you. I went to the underbanks where there are some interesting staircases and I used the wall here to give a bit of foreground uh, interest and try to get some nice oldie worldy pictures and then as I was going up the steps I used the low angle coming up the top to get a nice view of the rain on the flags and the lampposts below and then looking down the next road with the lamppost and the town below I think here I actually caught a ghost um, I didn't quite realize what I was getting I think there's a light flashing inside the underground car park but it created quite an interesting picture so which are the keepers and are they black and white or color so I've done a little bit more work on each of them and these are the ones that I would keep and you can see the score of color to black and white obviously that's just my view and you might disagree but this is why I think the way I think. OK, so I hope that was interesting. I hope that was a bit of fun. Um, again, black and white or colour, which do you think is most important in photography? Which has the most gravitas? Is it horses for courses? Should you do a career where you only do black and white, you only do colour? Should you know you're going to shoot for colour or black and white when you go out? Does it matter? Uh, can you mix black and white and colour in a single project? Does it work? What are the rules? Are there any rules? Gosh, there's so much to talk about, but it'd be lovely to hear from you. So if you could drop a comment in the comment section, that would be fantastic. As always, like, share, subscribe. That does me no end of good. It really warms my heart when I get new subscribers. So please do just consider, cons do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week. Look after yourselves and I will see you again very soon. That's all for now.